In this video, I'm going to create an embryo project with two controllers, one running on an Arduino controlling a hobby servo motor, and the other a user interface running on a computer with a slider that controls the servo position. The two programs communicate via the serial cable. Start with a new project. I'll call it Single Servo Control. A new project starts with just one controller. It doesn't really matter which controller you start with, but I will do the Arduino project first. So make sure Arduino is selected as the hardware type, and press the Create button. I rename the default agent to Servo Control. Next, I go to the Library tab, open up Outputs, Actuators, and drag a hobby servo node onto the screen. At this point, I'll create a connection between my computer and the Arduino. My Arduino is plugged into serial port 7, so I select it from the dropdown and press the Connect button. While the connection program is uploading, I'll change the servo pin input to 9 to match my hardware. When the program is done uploading, I see a good connection message in the communicator, and I can drag the activation input to control the servo. This is a very simple program, and I could get away with doing everything on this one agent, but in the spirit of keeping up good habits, I will make a couple more agents. It's a good idea for each agent in a program to do just one thing. Good organization of your code makes bigger projects much easier to understand and maintain. To let other agents attach to and control the servo, I click the Expose button next to the activation input. Next, I will create an agent to handle serial communication. I right-click the Agents folder and select New Agent, then rename the agent to Communication. From the I.O. tab, I drag a serial communication node onto the screen. This node is responsible for creating a serial connection to a PC project. It only has one input, which is a unique ID for the communicator. I will leave it at the default zero value. Notice after adding a serial communication node to the controller, a bunch of serial communication nodes were added to the I.O. tab. There is an input and output for each data type. I want to add an activation input node, which the PC project will send a value to. I drag a serial activation input onto the communication agent's node screen. Serial communication nodes have two inputs. The first is the communicator ID, and it must match the ID of the serial communicator node. You can almost always leave this at zero. The next input is a unique ID for this input. On the PC project, there will be a serial activation output node, and it needs to have the same unique ID as this node in order for them to communicate. I will leave the unique ID at zero. This agent now encapsulates the communication setup for the controller. I will finish it up by renaming the output activation to servo activation and exposing it for outside connections. I make one more agent and name it main control. I drag the communication and servo control agents onto this node screen and connect the servo activation from the communication agent to the servo control agent. Again, this is such a small program that everything could safely be on one agent but I'm demonstrating a good practice for creating maintainable projects in Embryo. Remember, each agent should only do one thing. This project has an agent that writes to a servo pin, one that gets communication values from the serial port, and one that plugs the value sent from the serial communicator into the servo activation. This program is now complete. If you have an Embryo license, you can upload a file program. To do this, I click on the Compile and Upload button. Now I'm going to create the User Interface Controller. I right-click on the Project Root Node and select New Controller. I rename it Servo Control and select PC for the hardware target type. I leave the Create Form Template checkbox checked and press the Create Controller button. To start off, I will create the Serial Communication Agent. Right click on the Agents folder in the new controller and create a new agent named Communication. Again, from the I.O. tab, drag a Serial Communication node. This node has more inputs and outputs than the Arduino counterpart. First is the Communicator ID, which should be the same as the Communicator in the Arduino controller. In this, and in most cases, it's zero. The port number is the COM port to attach to. My Arduino is plugged into port 7, so I will set the port number input. If your COM port might change, you would want to expose the port number input to be set from the form, but I will skip this for this simple example. The two trigger inputs open and close the serial connection. Clicking Connect opens the connection. If the connection is good, the isConnected output gets an activation of 1. If there is a problem, the HasError output will be set to 1, and the error message will have a text value that you can show the user on a form. I'm going to expose the Connect and Disconnect triggers, as well as the isConnected and error message outputs, because I will want to connect these to my form. I'm going to be sending an activation value over the serial port, so I add a Serial Activation Output node to the editor. Again, the communicator and unique ID are left at the default zero. At this point, I can drag the activation input and see that it moves my servo. Notice that the Arduino communicator says no connection. This is because I'm not connected to the Arduino with a design time connection. The final Arduino controller is currently running on my Arduino, and the serial communication on this node are communicating with it. Finally, to finish the communication agent, 
I rename the output node's input activation to servo control and expose it. Now I'm ready to create my form. I double click the main form in the project tree to open it for editing. Instead of connecting to the serial port when the project starts up, I will add a connect and disconnect button to the form. First, I create two output triggers and rename them connect and disconnect. On the HTML panel, I will add two inputs to the input area div. Again, the default divs are just for convenience. You can write whatever HTML you want to implement your form. To add the first button, I add a P tag for some spacing. Then inside that, I type input type equals button, value equals connect, ID equals button connect, close tag. I save and see my button. I copy and paste the input tag and update the new tags value to disconnect and its ID to button disconnect. I save the form again so both my buttons show up. Now to wire up the click events, I right click on each button. Doing so jumps me to the JavaScript tab where the jQuery click handlers were added. In each I write output underscore connect dot trigger and output underscore disconnect dot trigger. I save the form and see that my buttons now fire the output triggers. I go back to the control agent and see my main form node now has the new triggers. I drag the communication agent onto this node screen and connect the connect and disconnect triggers. If the communicator can't get access to the serial port, it will have an error message which I want to show to the user. Back on the form I go to the HTML section. Under the connect button I add another p tag and give it an ID label error. To make it stand out as an error, I will make the text red. I do this by typing style equals color colon red semicolon. On the add input column, I add a text input and rename it error. I create a new on change event by pressing the plus sign and selecting the checkbox next to the error input. In the on change handler, I type the ID of my p tag, in this case label underscore error, equals input error. Back on my control agent, I now have the error input on the main form node that I need to connect to. I could drag the error message output from the communication node to the main form node. This makes for a pretty ugly connection. Instead I will drag another instance of the communication agent onto the screen and connect it to the form node. This keeps things a bit cleaner and easier to read. One side note about this, now that the servo control input is exposed in two places, if I set one of them and leave the other at zero, then go to the communication agent, I see that the servo control input is zero. This is because the blend mode is set to multiply. If I change it to add, I get the correct value. Also note that now both servo control inputs on the main control agent add to the servo position. Finally, I will make a slider control on the form to control the servo. For this I will use jQuery.UI, which is included in Embryo Forms. See jQueryUI.com for lots of examples of fancy controls you can create with it. I go to the slider page and see the default example. I open the view source and see that it's pretty easy to set up, just one line of code. However, I want to get the slider value when it changes. I look through the other examples and find that custom handle does what I need. I copy the code I need and see that the only markup I need is a div with an ID of slider. Back on Embryo, I go back to the HTML page. At the end of the input area, I add a new div and give it an ID slider. On the JavaScript tab, I paste the code I copied to the end of the document ready block. I use the same name for my div, so I don't need to change the first line. I don't need anything to happen when the slider is created, so I delete the create handler. I add an output activation to my form and rename it servo control. Then in my slide handler, I replace the existing line of code with output underscore servo control equals UI dot value divided by 100. The slider's value range is from 1 to 100. Dividing by 100 converts it to the range needed for an activation. Now I can save the form and drag the slider to change the servo output value. Finally, back on the control agent, I connect up the servo output to the input on the communication node. The user interface controller is now finished. I right click on the controller in the project tree and select compile controller. I make sure the target folder, name, and PC type are correct, then press compile controller. Now I can close Embryo and run my servo control interface as a standalone program.